Mm. But it's peaks and troughs. Yeah. And I know, you know, there's always a trough coming. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's part of life. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm getting very intense. That was so and, deep. But, yeah. but that's, that's the truth of how I see it. 100%, yeah. We would like you to transfer to another prison and befriend someone to elicit a confession. Taryn? Hi. Hi. Hello, nice to see you again. You too. I mean, we were just talking. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, years, I years think. Years ago. Yeah, I have to be honest, I only really vaguely remember that interview. I know. Me too, to be honest. Yeah, it's one of those red carpet craziness yeah, moments. Craziness. Yeah, craziness. Nice to see you again. You too. Yeah. I mean, a lot has changed since then. Yeah. So many projects, now yeah. Blackbird. Mm. I mean, when you look back at the past years, like, is it just a blur in your head or do you remember these specific moments of your career? Um, yeah, no, I do. I've got a sort of weird memory for dates and things and I'm able to kind of... You know, I've got a good chronology of the past 10 years of my life because it's broken up by different projects, different movies. And mm. so I sort of go, oh, I was there. I was this mm. age when I did that. So mm. this must have been then. And um, But yeah, I've been very, very, very lucky. I've had great opportunities and I'm just hoping it carries on, really. It definitely will carry on. I can assure you that. Thank you. When we said hi earlier and you asked me how I'm doing, I was hoping you'd say it in the accent that you used in this film, in this series. You were hoping I'd sound like I'm from Chicago. Yes, because in I think it's in episode one, episode two, you was like, how you doing? And I was like, Taryn just said, how you doing? In the Chicago <laughs> accent. Yeah. Amazing. I got to sort of live my Italian-American gangster fantasy doing this it yeah. suits you very much thanks very much yeah you're not the first person to say that it i feel does. like i'm a little bit of a disappointment when i start <laughs> talking and i don't have that very sort of you know urban east coast thing going on were you tempted to keep the accent after filming no that would be insane wouldn't it no you can adopt listen you can just adopt a new identity no one has to know what of a the chicago of, italian vibe like just yeah keep it. maybe less the sort of thuggish drug yeah, dealer yeah not, yeah not the drug dealing stuff not no that. <laughs> no just the sort of smooth charming yeah, yeah. smooth charming the accent yeah the suaveness. I can, yeah I can, not that you aren't no no i can <laughs> i feel like you're making me insecure no, i feel like i'm no, not enough for you, no, as, you as the are. welsh version no, of you are. No, we love the welsh tarot okay, that's good. why we okay. love you good i hope so there we do um but blackbird <laughs> it's such a deep show i mean it's got some dark themes to it mm. what was it about the show and the role that compelled you to take it because it is quite heavy it is heavy and i think you know um i think you know I, so my last live action project was the elton john musical biopic rocket man and um i don't know why i gave it that funny long name the elton john music biopic one um but you know that was sort of everything was kind of fluorescent neon technicolor lights yeah exactly Bright. glitz sequins <laughs> all that good stuff yeah exactly so i think blackbird not only represented a great acting challenge because of it being just a very complex role it also had this very this darkness to it that i found mm. very appealing it's just not really like anything i've done before um and yeah it's obviously a true story so kind of you know it, it's almost you know you almost don't believe it's it really happened um so yes the darkness was definitely something i was drawn to mm. as an actor and as being a you know human being a normal person like how do you balance that darkness with trying to be okay i guess whilst you're on the project yeah well paul who is opposite me in the show he's a very have i told have i set up the premise in this interview you'll have to forgive me i feel no, I, I mean feel free to take it yeah, away okay, do so, it now. yeah so i will do that <laughs> so you know the show is about a guy who i play named jimmy Keane, who gets 10 years for dealing drugs and possessing weapons and um he's offered a full pardon if he transfers to a high security facility to get a confession out of a suspected serial killer so that's the setup for the show and it really happened and the guy who i'm opposite is an actor called paul walter hauser who's uh, phenomenal in the show and um you know but we go to some pretty dark places me and him and discuss some pretty dark things and yeah i mean you know i think the way that we kind of navigated it was we just had a lot of fun in between we didn't sort of indulge and sit in the heaviness of it any more than we felt we needed to mm -hmm. for the sake of the show we just you know we'd mess around dance make each other laugh sing and you know go home and put on easy popcorn movies for kids really to try and sort of you know, as you say, balance it out a bit. What was your favourite song to, like, dance to and sing to on set? There's a video of me and him. We were actually, we got, we got trapped in a corridor when we were on location on one of the days. And um, we sang, uh, what the hell? We sang Stand By Me. Ah, oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, and there's a video of it, of us sort of dancing around, singing it. Maybe I'll stick it on Instagram yeah, or something. Yeah, stick it, stick it on the ground. Mm. Stick it on the ground. 
But do you think in this series fans are going to be surprised by your performance? Because like you said, it's darker than ever. Do you think fans are going to be taken by surprise? Like, whoa, like... I don't know. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. You know, I part of... I find it... I think, you know, lots of people now associate me with Rocket Man and... Um, and think of me as, as that thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the feeling of anyone thinking they know what I am. Literally, and labelling you, know, you, know, you because yeah. they, don't, they don't at the end of the day. And I think actors often get, there's that danger of being pigeonholed, and mm -hmm. I really don't want that. Yeah. Um, I'm easily bored, yeah. so I like to try and mix it up. So mm -hmm. I hope people are surprised, but yeah. I mainly just want them to think it's a good show. Yeah. One thing that made me go like, whoa, in the series is your gains. <laughs> Can we talk about your gains, Taryn? <laughs> and we need to give the people advice because it's summer. Summer is here. So how can we get gains like yours? Tell us. Uh, <laughs> so to build muscle, you've got to eat. You, <laughs> we know that. You yes. can't build muscle without <laughs> eating. And to burn fat, you've got to eat less. Yeah. So it's not about carbs. Okay. Uh, it's not about what you eat. It's about how much you eat. It's all calories. Okay. So there's no quick fix because the sun is sunning, Taryn. You need to be outside. Yeah. There's no. There's no quick fix. I'm afraid. Um, to lose weight, it's all about calorie deficit. Calorie deficit. Calories in, calories out. That's More it. You've less, got it. Yeah. You've got it. You know it. You we see. Know. You I mean, I know, know it. it. I'm just for the people out there that yeah. don't know it. You know? Yeah. But you know, bread's not the enemy. You just can't eat a whole enemy. loaf. You just yeah. can't eat a whole loaf. Not the whole loaf. Yeah. Um, there's a monologue in the show where you say, you know, there's times when you think something's going to go one way and then it goes sideways. Mm. Do you have an audition story that you felt that way, but then obviously you still got the role? Uh, I don't know that. I mean, I think the ones that have gone sideways, the ones that have gone, the ones that went sideways were normally because I wasn't well prepared enough. Mm -hmm. And if I wasn't well prepared enough, it's because I wasn't invested in it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not invested in it, then you shouldn't be playing the role. Right. So, but I don't have like, a story where I went in and, you know, insulted the director or anything like that. Yeah. Um, um, I've got plenty of stories in my life from when things have gone sideways, oh, but not one, no one that I want to share on <laughs> oh the radio. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but speaking of, yeah, preparation, that's like Jimmy, like he had to prepare for this, like, task that he was, like, going to do. Yeah, so well, that's one of the things that was really interesting for me about playing the part was that I'm playing a guy who's playing a guy, you know. He has to kind of act his way through this extraordinarily dangerous situation because in prison what he what he has to do what he agrees to do for the fbi you'd be labeled a snitch mm. and um you know in a high security facility like the one like springfield springfield being the name of the prison he went to that's a really dangerous place to be so for me i there's a great challenge in being a guy in playing a guy who's playing a guy mm. but also you know signaling to the audience mm. when you need to for, for the storytelling um so there was a challenge in that for me as an actor that i enjoyed mm. and in playing jimmy like you must have had time to think like what would you do if you was in that situation i think yeah I read, of course like, you wouldn't have taken it or would i you don't think do? so yeah i don't mm. think so i mean i don't think i'd end up in prison i'd yeah, hope no, course, do you know what yeah, i mean so yeah. it's like a weird yeah it's a weird thing i relate to you know he part of the reason he makes that decision in the show is because he wants to be with his father who's in ailing health and I relate to that mm -hmm. I get that part of it and that's one of the sides of his character that's most appealing he really loves his father because you know there's not a lot to love about him other than that really mm -hmm. terrific abs aside <laughs> he's um he's not a, he's not a massively likable guy at the start mm -hmm. of the show mm, not at all no. but he's got that love for his father which is beautiful yeah I think that's why the audience get on board with him really because mm -hmm. otherwise you would sort of go why am I you don't. You wouldn't want to root for him, you know, because mm. he's sort of quite conceited. Mm. I hope this isn't a spoiler, but it is in the first episode. But there was a bit where Jimmy got tricked into taking a deal that led to him getting that. Mm, yeah, um, extra that's time. right. That's right. So for you, is there anything about the industry that you were not tricked, but you, like once you're now in it, you were like, wait, I didn't expect this. This is a scam. And I ask that to say, a lot of people relate. Work in life, sometimes nine to five, it's more like six to nine. Let's be real. Yeah. You know. So is it anything like that about the acting industry? Um, yeah, there are things, you know, I mean, if, to be, you know, like really frank and real, you know, I don't think it's healthy to uh, uh, to always be reviewing images of yourself and footage of yourself. I think that for me has led to a situation where I'm quite, I can be quite in my head yeah, about definitely. my own self image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's being totally candid. Mm -hmm. That That's probably one of the greater pitfalls of an actor. And also reading things that people say about yeah. you, which I try and avoid, but it's actually not always avoidable. Mm -hmm. Those things I don't think are very good for your mental health. Um, 
but there's a lot I love about it as well. I go home at the end of a day's filming and and if it's a good job and I'm excited about what's happening, I feel incredibly creatively fulfilled and creative fulfillment is a really is a really healthy place to be, I think. So swings and roundabouts, you know, um but it's definitely not like I don't I think acting's been demystified now, you know. Mm. I mean 40 years ago everyone thought it was glamorous yeah. and kind of elevated somehow and it's not really, no. you know. Yeah. It's just a it's just a job. Yeah. But a lot of people see you doing it, you yeah. know, and um and there's great things about that and you know when you're in a show like Blackbird which is being well received and people are saying nice things about it feels great. Mm. But it's peaks and troughs. Yeah. And I know, so. you know, there's always a trough coming. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's part of life. Yeah. Um I, sorry, I'm getting very intense. That was so and, deep. But, yeah. but that's that's the truth of how 100%, I see it. Yeah, I remember I heard Mahershala Ali say like five percent or even one percent of the work is on camera. Like yeah. the whole job. It's so like, true. It's and you live and you live for that bit. Yeah, because that's because that that bit where the camera rolls and you get that take that one minute that mm. ninety seconds or whatever it is, you know, mm. that's when you go okay, now I'm doing my thing yeah. and now I feel good. But the bull sugar plums around it that goes with it yeah. i didn't get it i didn't do it i didn't yeah, do it i caught, it. Myself. I caught it. myself i caught myself there's so much you know that goes along with it that is less ple- pleasant um but look no one wants to hear an actor moan about being an actor it's no. it's a great it's a great life and i'm very mm. lucky and you bless the people with your great works and your entertainment. Oh, so uh, you. you charmer. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. And for Jimmy, like playing him, mm. is there anything that having the experience working on the show that you're going to take with you into your next roles? Uh, working with Ray Liotta was something that really, really, really uh, affected me. Mm-hmm. As an actor, you ha- I've had so many great experiences with other actors, but I've never felt... Um, I've just felt that what the relationship that he and I built it just felt very real to me mm-hmm. and I felt we bonded very intensely very quickly and um I've never and it's to do with I think it's partly to do with how good the writing is of the yes. relationship we both arrived feeling like we knew these characters intimately we knew who they were there's so much nuance written into the relationship but Ray turned up and he just was big Jim and as a result I kind of just slipped into being Jimmy and it felt like it had a just a reality to it you know um i suppose the way i would put it was i felt very moved by the experience of working with him and portraying those characters as an actor you know i I always remember adam driver saying like i think actors can get a bit caught up on feeling the emotion of what the character is experiencing and i think adam driver put it exactly right he said it's not your job to feel something it's the audiences wow. and it's true it really is true i believe that 100 percent. but sometimes you get lucky and you do get swept up in it and you do feel something of what the character feels you can get that caught up in it and they're the moments where you really feel 100 percent inhabited and involved in what you're doing and working with ray was was like one big experience of that i felt very very connected to him and the situation and so in terms of like, to, to get back to your question, what I'd take away from it, it's that Ray turned up fully inhabiting the part he was playing. And it was a reminder for me that you can, you can give all of yourself to something. Wow. It's, n- it's not just your shoulders and head in your close wow. up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so wow. yeah, that's what I'd take away from it. Wow, that's so beautiful. Yeah, like giving your all to something. Cause it's only yeah, gonna he gave his all and it was, yeah, sorry it to interrupt transit. you. Yeah. No, but like when you give you all, that only translates into a beautiful picture, like yeah. whatever that looks like in life, not just like working on screen, but like in all areas. Like yeah. when you give you all, like, totally, exactly. And he's mesmerizing in the show as a result. Definitely, one hundred percent. I've got one more question before we finish. It's quite a fun one. So you're calling me the charmer, but it's Jimmy who's the charmer in the show. Like yeah. He's very charismatic, very charming, knows yeah. how to use his words. <laughs> so how much is Taryn like that? Like, have you ever befriended someone just to, like, get a little something? And I'm talking, like, almost like flirting with, like, waitresses or, like, <laughs> airport security. I do it. So do you do it? Um... Look, I mean, Jimmy is me, so, you know, <laughs> I play him, so it's yeah. in, anything he does is in me. Yeah. Um, I suppose maybe uh, he's he's very knowing about his charm, yeah. and I think the secret to proper charm is not being too aware of it if you can <laughs> help it. Yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of 
you know, charming a waiter or a waitress, I think that's, I don't know, that's too near to manipulation right. for me, I okay. think. Okay, but we love free stuff, Taryn. Like, yeah. I love who, skipping cues. Who like, does not love right, free exactly. stuff? Right, exactly. Yeah, you're tr- I can tell, you're trouble, I can tell. <laughs> Listen, Taryn, I'm trying to live a good life. That's what I was, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> But yeah, that's all the questions I have. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Taryn. Thank you. Lovely talking with you again. You Thank too. you.